Welcome to Stuff You Missed in History Class, a production of iHeartRadio. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Tracy B. Wilson. And I'm Holly Fry. One of the episodes that we did this week was on Tanaka Hisashige, which uh, uh, this episode has had kind of a saga. This is actually something that I wrote much earlier in the year. Um, Sometimes we write episodes that are meant to be part of a sponsorship, and then the pandemic happened. And that sponsorship no longer was the thing. It did eventually come back in a different form, but it meant that, like, I had to totally change gears and put that episode to the side. Um, And so it is just now back. Back when I first wrote it, it was much more in the recent past that our Saturday classic on Hokusai had just been <laughs> in the archive. Like, it was really going to be, like, maybe three weeks after the Hokusai episode came out, this episode was going to come out. That's how it happens sometimes. Yeah. That's your behind-the-scenes um, insight into how the sausage gets made. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes we're working on sponsored content. That has to get shuffled elsewhere. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't have to do with the pandemic. Sometimes things just shift and like a yeah a, a company that might sponsor us decides that they actually want to go in a different direction with like their creative and it doesn't quite work with our show anymore. And luckily you were able to repurpose the work you had done into just yeah. a regular episode. I just kept it on the on the back burner Perfect. for months. And Bravo, months. you! <laughs> Hooray! Uh, I'm glad we got to talk about him. I'm glad he didn't like wind up being shelved entirely. Um, because if you like go try to dig up some information about him, like there's there's not tons and tons of it available, especially outside of Japan. But he really is regarded as one of the founders of like the Japanese technology industry and his career spanned so many different phases of the way people were using uh, different types of engineering in Japan and the way people were using different kinds of mechanization and what society was like. I mean, we are all products of the time that we are living in and our lives changed dramatically based on changes in the world. That's obvious over the last many months. But I feel like he is a particularly standout example of somebody whose life and work were changed so dramatically by the factors of the world that he was living in. Yeah, and he, I mean, to my mind, was obviously a genius, Mm -hmm. right? So he was, much like you were able to repurpose this uh, episode, (laughs) he was able to repurpose his knowledge of engineering and how to create something both artistic and technologically advanced And kind of, like, evolve with the times in ways Mm -hmm. that kept his work relevant, which is not something everybody can do. Yeah. And there are, I mean, we said in it that there are are pieces that he made that still work and still exist. And if you uh, Google him, you can find videos of many of them working. I watched that little archer 15 times in a row. It's just so fascinating. How could you not? (laughs) I mean... Like I said in the episode, like, he's one of those people, when I look at his work, I'm just like, well, I'm a stupid person. I could never get anywhere (laughs) near what he could achieve. No amount of art I ever make will be this. Uh, Again, he's genius. Literal genius. Yeah. So on Wednesday, we talked about Nina Otero Warren. Yeah. um, who, Who caught my eye, like I said at the top of the episode, because I had not really been aware that there was part of the Voting Rights Act that was uh, amended to specifically reference language minorities in the word of the act. And then uh, she was a person that came up a lot in conversations about that. She, obviously, she she did not work on the Voting Rights Act specifically, but she, like her work with Spanish-speaking voters and suffrage for Spanish speakers was related to all of that. I found it a little frustrating that it took so much digging to get into the more problematic and troubling aspects of her career that were related to Indigenous people. It is troubling, but not surprising. It's No, it's not surprising. <laughs> it was disappointing. And it was also disappointing. Uh, one of the biographies that I used as a source for this episode, it's not even that. It was It was from like 1990, I think. And it had this sentence that was like, there were some genuine heroes in her family tree. And then it went on to reference the fact that 
like all of these ancestors um, on one side of the family had been part of the Spanish conquest of the Americas. And I was like, I don't know that we can just uncritically call that heroic because yeah. as with other nations' conquests in the Americas, there was a lot of genocide involved. And like, uh, it just, it made the whole... Uh, it made me have to read like read the whole biography with an eye of being like, are what are you are you leaving anything out here? I feel like that's the trick with most biographies, right? They lean one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, in a an upcoming episode that we're doing, uh, I really enjoyed that one biographer in particular would call out like this biography that I have also used as a reference really loves this person. This biography is the critical version. This, like, they would kind of reference each of them and tell you. <laughs> like, yeah. If you want to get the take of someone who feels this way about this this figure, here's the one to go to. If you want the loving, forgiving version, <laughs> here's, here's right. the one to go to, which was kind of a cool breakdown. There, you don't always get that those clear delineations when reading another biography of a person. Yeah. Well, and her her work, like her work as school su- superintendent, um clearly she she had to walk this very fine line where federal policy was that schools be taught only in English and like that was the policy that she was having to work under as school superintendent. But like she also seems to have been like just trying to protect Spanish-speaking students at the same time while trying to uphold this policy, which was also really important because we didn't really get into it in the episode, but, like, there was a whole... Trendy is not the right word. Like, it was commonplace for teachers to wash students' mouth out with soap for speaking Spanish at school. Right. Um, And so she was advocating against that kind of stuff while also just sort of trying to be this bridge between Anglo and Hispanic worlds. And so her life followed this trajectory where, uh, you know, at first it was not permitted to teach students in Spanish at all. And then during her lifetime, the attitude started to shift a little bit in New Mexico specifically to be like, speaking another language is a gift and this cultural heritage that we have from having like such a large um, Hispanic population is also a gift, and we need to preserve that and not try to just wipe it out. I'm mostly very excited about her um, basket of cocktails. Her, she had such a, uh, you know, in so many ways, she was really defying convention. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was definitely social drinking was totally uh, accepted within her social circle, but <laughs> the drinking basket cracked me up. It's pretty good. That's a good detail. Yeah, and her, um, as as ethically, you could have ethical and moral questions about telling people that you are uh, widowed instead of divorced. But the fact that she just maintained that so that she could live her own life as much as possible the way that she wanted to was pretty captivating uh, to me. But then at the same time, like, it was clear that her younger sister, Anita, really suffered because of the fact that they were all obligated to do this with their... Uh, you know, expectations within the family, but, like, it really seems like uh, Nina's desire to go her own way meant that a whole lot fell on Anita's shoulders that Anita really did not enjoy. Yeah, that is heartbreaking to me. It yeah. It gets into a whole other area of, like, familial obligation and relations and what people value and how they value those things differently. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, I would probably be the horrible, I would 100% be the horrible sibling that's like, sorry, y'all, this is not for me. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> yeah, so she's a complicated person. I hope we uh, we did justice to the fact that, like, she did a lot of work that was really important, but also kind of a tangle. Yeah. So, uh, happy Friday. I hope everybody is having a, a you know, whatever's, whatever's coming ahead of you this weekend. I hope it is safe and pleasant and restful as possible. Uh, if, again, like, I'm always like, if you're working this weekend, I hope customers are nice to you. Like, right. I've just seen so many people talking about customers being mean lately. So, if you're going out to places this weekend, please be kind. Uh, And, you know, we continue to have our wish for everybody to be as safe and well as possible in these times that are still continuing to be this way. (music) 
Stuff You Missed in History Class is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.